Pasek. Good morning. Thank you very much, Dr. Yunis. First of all, magandang umaga sa lahat. Good morning, mabuhay. Um, i, um, let me thank the organizers of this event, the Global Professional Advancement uh, after June Cordova, who recruited me to be a panelist in your um, Lodi Moment webinar series number three. Of course, to Miss Susan and to Jomar as well, and to uh, uh, my co-panelists this morning, si Miss Eileen Clemente. And it really gives me a pleasure no, to see Wow, ilan na tayo ngayon? More than 500 um, students of tourism and hospitality all over the country. Of course, not to mention our professors and our faculty, our deans who are also with us this morning. Maraming maraming salamat po. You know, I remember I, I was also once a student of uh, tourism 30 years ago. <laughs> so, masyado matagal ng panahon yun. And at that time, tourism was uh, the tourism course program is not that popular yet. Very few schools are um, offering the tourism course at the time, but um, look at us now. Um, many schools are already offering uh, the tourism and hospitality program, and this only reflects how um, you know the potentials of the Philippines for uh, this um, uh, industry to grow has really, really uh, expanded. Uh, over the years, and um, it is also reflected in the number of students who are taking this you know, course program. So this morning, I was really tasked to share some insights with you, and I hope that indeed um, what uh, the information that I will be sharing with you this morning will um, create a new mindset no, for all of us as we um, journey and uh, continue to, um, of course, move forward. Uh, yun sinasabi nga natin um, under the new normal. So let me share my slide first. Okay. I'm sorry. So I'd like to, so this is fortifying new mindset, creating new mileage. And I'd like to start my um, um, talk with you this morning by sharing some um, uh, situation of the global tourism industry. As we can recall, in March 2020, COVID-19 effectively halted tourism industry worldwide. Countries closed their borders. International and local destinations shut down. Travel was hampered by entry restriction nations and tourism-related businesses. The United Nations World Tourism Organization in their January 28 article said that 2020 is the worst year on record for the tourism industry. There were 1 billion fewer international arrivals, which represents a drop of 74% from 2019 due to unprecedented decline in demand and widespread travel restrictions. Based on the latest UNWTO World Barometer, a tourism barometer, the decline of international travel represented an estimated loss of 1.3 trillion US dollars in export revenues and a risk loss of 100 to 120 million direct tourism jobs from small and medium sized enterprises. In the Philippines, due to entry restrictions, we only received 1.3 foreign arrivals last year. And this represents a decline of 83.9% from previous years, 8.2 million international arrivals. So, ang laki talaga ng difference, no? And in terms of tourist receipts, syempre, when we had a decline in our foreign arrivals, we will also be experiencing a decline in our tourism receipts, which is uh, also equivalent to more than uh, 83%. So, the numbers definitely don't look good right now but if there's anything i have learned in my more than 30 years of working in the government sector of the tourism industry it is that our industry the tourism sector is resilient we can adapt to the changing times and emerge better and more successful in the future that that future look like and let me share with you uh, insights gathered from surveys done by various organizations on the future of work the future of human capital or skills or talent development and the future of leadership. On the future of work, the operative word is change. Post pandemic, everything will change from how we work, where we work and who will we provide service for. 
As per study conducted by McKinsey and Company released last February 2021, the future of work will, mo will change most in sectors where travel is physical, is more physical proximity or contact to other people. And the travel and tourism industry is a prime example of this, as we often say that tourism is primarily a people to people business, which involves customer facing service. And um, let's think of the mga hotel attendants natin, mga tour guides natin, even our massage therapists, our boat men no, offering uh, island hopping tours, among others. These kinds of work will experience the most change post pandemic. And what will these changes be? First, there will be changes in who will travel, who will be our future guests. It is said that there will be substantial decline in the business travel segment, which is the most lucrative segment for airlines. And this is due to the virtual conferencing, eliminating the need to travel for work. And the McKinsey report projects that about 20% of people who travel for business will not return post pandemic. There will be a need for specialized tours focusing on small groups or families. There will be a resurgence of individual or solo tour packages or self-guided tours instead of joining big tour groups where there will be lots of people and higher risks of um, uh, the uh, virus transmission. Domestic travel will be more prevalent with people being hesitant to go far away uh, from uh, a destination far from their homes. Second, customer service will be redefined and um, there will be increased reliance for contact, contactless service and reliance on digital technology. There will be an increase in e-commerce transactions in relation to travel such as direct bookings at tourism establishments and airlines, online reservations for restaurants, and use of digital ordering and payment systems. I'm sure we are all experiencing this now, no? When we order our food, um, when we also book, you know, and shop online, everything is already done online. Natuto po ako mag-online banking uh, during uh, last year. I don't usually use online banking, but uh, at the time when our borders were closed, no? So napilitan ako talagang mag-aral ng lahat ng mga ito online. Um, from work perspective, there will be increased reliance on digital technologies such as the use of smartphones, tablets, video conferencing apps like Zoom and Google Meet, and the use of online work management systems such as Microsoft Teams. Um, if I can relate to you an experience last year when uh, we were just starting, you know, um, I struggled adjusting to work from home because uh, of course, hindi ako tech savvy. And I'm sure all of you, our young students, hindi nyo problema yan. But maybe for, for me, no, um, who belong to a generation na talagang wala namang kaming mga tablets when we were growing up, uh, really I had the difficulty adjusting to work from home. But good enough that I had young members in my team who were very patient with me kasi parang I felt so unproductive at the time. Uh, siguro mga March to uh, March, to, mga three months ako nag adjust adjust kasi I felt so unproductive. I cannot parang uh, even convert a file on my, on, my, on my phone. So I had to rely on the younger members of my team. And I really thank them, you know, for being so patient with me. Kaya kayo, please be also patient with the older members of your uh, maybe family or your you know, the teachers, um, bear with them and uh, also help them, no, um, parang overcome their mga technological deficiencies because this is where we are going now. This is our life at the moment. And yun na nga, kinakailangan nating mag-adjust. Third, there will be increased emphasis on um, safety and security. Travelers will seek out tourism establishments compliant with health and safety protocols. Um, they may look at establishments displaying safety seals, such as the World Travel and Tourism Council Safe Travel Stamp, which is an internationally recognized seal, and the world's first ever global safety and hygiene stamp, allowing travelers to recognize governments and businesses around the world that have adopted globally standardized health and hygiene protocols. So last um, month, the DO2 uh, WTTC stamps 
uh, in two hotels here in Manila, Joy Nostals and Grand Hyatt. And we are also extending this uh, safe travel stamps to destinations and Baguio has applied, Boracay has also applied. So uh, definitely um, we, um, international travelers will be seeking and looking out for this safety seal stamp. And um, at the home front, the Department of Tourism, you know, since last year, we have been issuing health and safety protocols for um, the operations of various tourism enterprises. And you can read from the slides that we have uh, protocols for DOT accredited restaurants, of course, for accommodation establishments, for mice, um, organizers and facilities, even for some activities such as diving. And we also have one for surfing. So marami na tayo mga ano, uh, health and safety protocols in place. Where we work will also change. Even post-pandemic, the move towards remote working arrangements, work from home and flexible working arrangements will be maintained. Humanize, a technology firm conducted a 2020 study using anonymous company emails, chat, and calendar data, and found that working outside of the office actually has the following effects. Employees work longer by an average of 10 to 20 percent. Um, I can relate to this very much last year, you know, kasagsagan uh, ng when risk and domestic travelers, no, we, uh, the DOT mounted sweeper flights, uh, of course, assisted um, all these uh, tourists stranded in our destinations, talagang umaab, parang halos hindi na rin natutulog yung aming frontline staff, uh, of course, including myself, no, because we really need to ensure that uh, we extend them the appropriate and prompt assistance that they needed. Kasi um, you have to deal with emotion, the emotions no, of uh, the stranded tourists. Diba? classic classing emotions ang hinaharap ng aming mga frontliners. Merong mga nagagalit, merong of course very, yung anxiety no, na na-experience na nila. Um, so yeah, the, um, more than eight hours of work. Umaabos, umaabot ng midnight actually. But you know, I have to be honest also, parang work from home, parang for me, sabi ko, uh, ano, parang napakahirap i-accept. No, parang nagre-resist pa ako ng mga panahon na yun. Kasi nga, um, parang there was no borderline between um, your business working hours and your personal time. Uh, and I really like to, to uh, share this experience with you because I'm sure most of us would have gone through a certain phase of adjustment. But we need to adjust. Yun lang din yun, no? We need to accept and make that adjustment. Kasi kung kung papatalo tayo na at i-resist natin kung ano yung ating situation right now, I think it's all the more that we will really be depressed, no? And uh, um, we will be losing hope and mas parang magagalit tayo sa ano sa sa situation. But um, of course, also with prayers, no? Um, and um, the 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 support from from your colleagues, no? From from friends and from family. Um, ma ano natin yun? Uh, Kung baga in time nakapag-adjust ako. I lost weight. No, I lost weight during uh, ECQ. But sabi ko nga sa kay Secretary Berna. Um, yes, ma'am, uh, nagpapasalamat din talaga ako sa young members of the team no, for really being patient with me when it comes to adjustments, yung mga kinakailangan ko uh, from the office or even yung mga files, even presentations, and even parang navigating at first sa Zoom. So all of these, um, so employees also work longer, um, also beneficial uh, ang working from home naman pag uh, longer working hours titingnan natin all, uh, parang good yun from the employee's perspective no and but um, also people have less desire to go back to office right now or travel to work or they live close to work maybe for some people really um, um, they are well adjusted to working from home and lastly, some business segments will also change. As for the my segment, there will be an increase in outdoor events versus enclosed indoor events to maintain physical distancing and venue capacity. There will also be a move towards hybrid events involving both offline and online segments. 
the cruise industry, which was severely affected at the start of the pandemic, will also have to change to counter the negative impression and to boost consumer confidence to travel. <clears throat> there will be new products as the work from beach packages, which allows people to travel and enjoy beach destinations in remote work setup <clears throat> will be prevalent. Uh, ito yung mga tinatawag nating vacations. And when I went to Boracay for a meeting last year, uh, I was talking to some resorts and they said that they have already, uh, they have been offering you know, work from the beach packages or workation packages. But what is important in this kind of product is the need you know, to have um, uh, high speed and uninterrupted internet service. So yun yung importante. I believe may, maybe some of us here have also adjusted yung ating internet speed sa bahay, no? Kasi kinakailangan natin na hindi tayo na-interrupt when we have Zoom meetings and uh, listening to webinars like this. What about the future of skills and talent development? So uh, we are in the uncharted territory, so to speak, because of this pandemic. And according to the World Economic Forum entitled New Vision for Education, education, fostering social and emotional learning through technology, the gap between the skills people learn and the skills people need is becoming more obvious. As traditional learning in school falls short of equipping students with the knowledge they need to thrive and survive in the actual work environment. But how do we bridge this gap? We need to ensure that our students are equipped with the 21st, 21st, skill, 21st century skills. And most of us here may know this. According to the applied educational systems, there are 12 21st century skills divided into three categories. And this would be the learning skills, the literary, literacy skills, and the life skills. Learning skills, or the four Cs, refers to the mental processes required to adapt and improve upon a work, working environment, and namely critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. Literacy skills focuses on how students can discern facts, how these facts are made known to the public and the technology behind them. These are the IMT, or information, media, and technology skills. There is a strong focus on determining trustworthy sources and factual information and separate facts from misinformation prevalent in the internet or what we call fake news. So tayo, no, um, uh, your generation is very privileged, no? privileged and very lucky that you have easy access to data, to information on in internet. Dati kami, when we are asked to do our papers, our assignments, we go to the library, um, go through journals, yung hard copies of journals. But ngayon, uh, it's so easy on the internet. Sabi nga eh, consult Google, di ba? Even with what we feel uh, sa ating mga health. But we also have to be conscious of um, really discerning ano yung uh, right information from the fake ones. Lastly, life skills refer to intangible elements that focus on a person's personal and professional qualities. Particularly, these are the flips or flexibility or the ability to adapt to change, leadership, initiative, or the readiness to take action, productivity, and social skills. We need to be cognizant of this 21st century skills in order for us students to thrive in a post-pandemic tourism job market. Pag gumradway tayo out there, it's really going to be highly competitive. In times of crisis, leaders need to keep the boat afloat. They need, <clears throat> and what are the skills that are needed to be effective? Leader, number one, effective communication skills. Well, this is very common. This is the ability of a leader to communicate factual information and instructions in a clear, candid, consistent, and reliable manner. There is no room for half-truths and fake news. The workers rely on the leader, thus the leader must be able to lead by example. Second, empathy. Due to the anxiety and worries about the effects of the pandemic, leaders have to lead with empathy. This can mean listening to the 
concerns of workers, referring them to counseling when applicable, but most importantly, cultivating meaningful relationships with their team members. Third is hybrid team leadership. Due to flexible working arrangements and work from home, leaders must have the ability to effectively manage their team members working from different settings. This entails different monitoring schemes for productivity and efficiency. Fourth is leveraging technology, and this is the ability of the leaders to adapt and utilize new technologies effectively. This includes the conduct of virtual meetings, communication through various digital apps, and the use of programs or applications to manage and monitor online work, among others. You know, so work then is through email. But at the time, nung nag ECQ tayo, and even up to now, uh, we do our work via Viber. There was a point in time that talagang I wasn't able to open my email siguro for two days. Kaya pagbukas mo talagang, kasi nandun na yung trabaho sa Viber. Doon ka na nag-check, doon ka na nag, lahat doon mo na sinasagot whatever queries. And there was a time na sabi ko, after COVID, ayoko ng Viber. <laughs> kasi parang it eat ups my time, it eats up my... Ganun talaga yung naging, naging experience ko. But don't worry now, I have adjusted. no So... Um, and uh, lastly is the agility and resilience in times of VUCA or volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. This is the ability to live with grace and composure, the ability to render and implement effective decisions in the face of crisis, and the ability to adapt to fast-changing circumstances Change due to the pandemic. It is all the more essential of us um, to hone and develop these skills. No, among our students as future leaders to prepare them to thrive and succeed in their future work. So in a bid to promote and upgrade, to upgrade tourism education and skills training in the Philippines, the Department of Tourism has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Department of Education, the Technical edu Education and Skills Development Authority, and the Commissioner on Higher Education, as well as the industry through the in Tourism Industry Board Foundation no, for the convergence um, on tourism and hospitality education. Uh, and this was held last November 5, 2020. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat expressed that the partnership is an important milestone in tourism human capital development in the Philippines, as this will institutionalize the harmonization efforts of the government sector, the academy, and the tourism industry towards its goal of preparing students to be job ready and to meet the demands of the tourism industry. In pursuance of this objective, uh, of the convergence, the DOT and uh, its partner agencies, and I'd like also take, to take this opportunity to thank uh, the company of uh, Miss Eileen Clemente, who um, who was engaged by the DOT you know, to help us formulate the Philippine Tourism Human Capital Development Strategy and Action Plans for 2021 and 2025. The PTH CD envisions to harness competent world-class Filipino tourism professionals through a harmonized education system and strong tourism industry linkages and collaboration, working towards a sustainable and inclusive national socio-economic development. To achieve this vision, the PTHCD provided for seven, sorry, seven strategic actions. And one is to provide a framework that facilitates continuous learning and incessant development of tourism professionals. And this includes the expansion of the tourism education offering uh, in K-12, as well as the improved implementation of the Philippines qualifications framework in terms of ladderized uh, education for tourism and hospitality programs, among others. Number two is to advance further the implementation of the ASEAN MRE on tourism profes professionals. This was um, started by the Department of Tourism as early as mga 2012, not 2013. And um, under this um, action plan, we would like to further encourage to certified tourism professionals to register in the ASEAN tourism professional registry system. 
uh, inst institutionalize the ASEAN Master's Assessor and Master Trainer programs and further increase awareness on the ASEAN MRAPP among students uh, in the tourism private sector and the academic community. Third um, strategic action is to meet future tourism human capital. And this uh, involves the regular conduct of tourism labor market studies, promotion of tourism education opportunities, as well as preparing programs for the integration of our OFWs into the tourism workforce. We recognize no, the wealth of um, uh, information and experience that our OFWs who may be working in various hotels and uh, uh, sectors of the tourism and hospitality you know, outside of the Philippines and bringing this back uh, into the country and sharing it to, to the industry and to the academic community. They can become trainers, they can become uh, teachers of tourism and hospitality. So, mas magiging malawak yung ating perspective when uh, we would um, utilize the uh, our returning OFWs no, to be part of our uh, no, tourism and hospitality education. Number four is to facilitate and strengthen the access to a higher standard faculty. And this is meant to strengthen the capabilities of our tourism educators uh, and trainers by providing uh, training resources, developing certification of hospitality and tourism management educators to become assessors of the common ASEAN tourism curriculum. Fifth is to strengthen linkages and collaboration among uh, tourism industry stakeholders. And um, this entails the provision of uh, support mechanisms for industry immersions, training for public and private sector in the tourism related services or tourism auxiliary services. And this also includes expansion and strengthening the DOT stop cap program. Uh, the TAPCA program po is the, um, our tourism-oriented police for community order and uh, uh, protection, no? which we um, started in 2011. And the DOT has uh, also an MOU with the Philippine National Police. We know that safety and security is an important uh, factor in um, developing or having a successful tourism destination. The sixth uh, action is to grow investments in tourism human capital, particularly through the provision of improved um, student resources and manuals, upgraded laboratory equipment, as well as trainings and employment opportunities for the disenfranchised sector or the informal sector of the tourism value chain. Seventh, finally, is to continue to develop uh, DOT's internal human capital. And this includes the implementation of our strategic uh, performance management system, the launch of the integrated of learning needs assess assessment, and the provision of continuing education programs for our employees. Um, we actually included this in the PTHCD because we know that in order for DOT to be able to provide um, our relevant and responsive programs and policies, we need to keep on um, reskilling and also retooling our own uh, employees. So the Philippine Tourism Human Capital Development Plan will be the guidepost in developing policies and implementing projects, activities, and programs to address the gaps, needs, and requirements as government, private sector, and the academic community work together in improving the quality of tourism and hospitality education, making the Philippines a globally competitive tourism education destination. So as I end this um, presentation, uh, I really, uh, we, we in the Department of Tourism hope that we can continue to work together you know, to ensure the success of the Philippine tourism uh, and hospitality sector. Uh, dynamic industry that is tourism. So magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat and stay safe. God bless po. Thank you.